Hello and welcome to another update video about Solana. We'll start on the um, daily, weekly time frame, and I want to share with you the two scenarios here that we have on the chart. The white one and the yellow one, you know them both if you watched previous videos. The white one is the short-term bearish one, or actually quite bearish one. The yellow one is the still bullish one that allows for bullish trend continuation. And um, yeah, a lot of people dismiss um, bearish scenarios when I show them also in a bull market. But they still have to be integrated into a trading plan and have to be respected because they tell you where we have important turning points. And it's important to note that altcoins, they don't really have intrinsic value. They don't really give you any cash flow, anything, you know, it's not like a stock. So there are questionable fundamentals. And so they are basically just hype driven and altcoins love to finish in three waves. You know, that's just what they do. And therefore, I have to highlight these turning points. And I shared with you that we are basically here in the process of wrapping up a B wave in the white count. And if we then see further impulsive downside, especially a one two setup to the downside, it could be this C wave to the downside. OK, and the trading is obviously always a question of reward to risk. And as per the white count, the risk is definitely there on the downside. And um, all I just want to share with you is that this could technically be finished or after one more high we could have a B wave top. So it's all a question about reward and risk and trading the highest probability element of a trend, which was this rally, which in the yellow count is a third wave. The third is always the highest probability element of a trend or here within the C wave, even the third of a C wave or the third of a third wave. Um, anything beyond that is notoriously difficult. I mentioned it already last year or even early this year that it is not going to get easier on the Solana chart because that's what Elliott Wave tells us when we're morphing from a third wave into a fourth and a fifth is painful because fifth waves can be diagonals themselves. It, it's yeah. And then you never know is the fourth finished. So it's difficult. We track it. I give you support areas, but it is difficult. You have a lot of transformations of the scenarios and also the reward to risk element isn't as favorable anymore as it was when trading a third wave. Now, looking at the white count, though, it is um, a scenario in which this could be a B wave top and this wave two that presumably finished in December 22, never finished. It actually will finish here. So that's the scenario in which um, we could come down to near bear market low levels, but it's not preferred at this stage, but it is still something that we need to consider. And the question is always, OK, what is the level that distinguishes bullish trend continuation? And the white count, well, it's the $52 level. A sustained break below $52 would shift probabilities clearly towards the, um, the white count. So in the yellow count, though, trend continuation is preferred, especially as long as we're in a bullish market. And that is also the scenario I'm leaning to. Here, we're dealing with a five wave move to the upside. The third wave could be finished, maybe one more, more, one more high. Um, we have a wave one, a wave two, a wave three. This is the wave four support area you know about already and the wave five to the upset could still happen into the region of $444 plus. Uh, the idea would be that, um, yeah, I mean, the third wave could still get one more high. But basically, if this fourth wave is unfolding, the support area is between $110 and 52. The thing is, it's not entirely clear if this third is still unfolding. It is possible we get one more high. I wanted to see one more high because this move up looks a bit unfinished. So the fifth wave should also get five waves and it's still possible. One, two, three, four, five. It would need to avoid one more low in my interpretation, however. Um, this is already deeper than it would be ideal for a fourth wave. OK, so one, two. Bear in mind, we are also dealing here. Um, OK, so you know that four. Uh, we're dealing with um, an ending diagonal in this wave five of three. And therefore, a wave four can be very deep. This came down lower than it would be ideal, but not lower than valid. So that can, of course, happen when we have a liquidation event like we had um, in the last few days. So therefore, I keep the door open for one more high, but it certainly has increased probabilities for the scenario that we're already in the larger fourth wave, where we have to consider the $52 level as key support. Most um, probable support level here would be $73.20. That's the ideal target for a fourth wave. And if it's a shallow wave for 110 might be enough. So use these three FIP levels to maybe watch for a reaction. Looking at the shorter time frame, we can see here that the micro support area was broken, but the price did not sustain below it. Very important. Price did not sustain below that $131 level. That's really important um, because as I mentioned in the last few videos, 
technically speaking, this yellow wave four is not invalidated until we break below the yellow wave two, but that's too low to be reliable. So normally I consider uh, yeah, a um, sustained break below the 61.8 retracement level break of the structure, but it's not a sustained break yet. It was just a wick, couldn't even close the four hour candle below that support level, okay? So it's still respected, but obviously frustrating for anybody who had a stop below it. But then again, you know, trading with a tight stop in a diagonal is just from a tactical point of view, uh, always just something that's a bit difficult. Uh, and it just happens, you know, it's just, uh, especially on a day like that, which was kind of unusual. We didn't have a day like that, um, well, in, in more than half a year, I'd say, you know, it's uh, very rare it's been. So that's just sometimes happens. Uh, that's just sometimes what happens. Now we're dealing with a situation, okay, could this still be a way for? Yes, it could be. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm still leaning towards, I mean, probabilities have become fairly balanced. It also doesn't really matter if this is the yellow wave 4 or if it's the red A wave. The red count is, by the way, the count in which we're dealing with a deeper wave 4, as I just showed you, with support roughly between $110 and $52. Um, because the next rally, I mean, if one more low forms, I would clearly say it's the red count, okay? But even if we start the rally from here, it could be red or it could be yellow, it doesn't matter because the rally would likely be an ABC structure. So we can track an ABC structure and the ABC would be <laughs> ABC in wave five in yellow or ABC in the red count. It doesn't make the difference. It's just that B waves can overshoot and also that wave five should go above the third wave high and then we can get one more low afterwards. So it will be hard to distinguish between them anyway. So therefore it doesn't really matter. But at the moment there is no confirmed low in place. I'm watching for the first signals of maybe a low in place and the earliest signal that a low is in place would be a break above the last swing high at $155. That would be um, basically, yeah, the last swing high. And also, let's see, in terms of Fibonacci resistance, yeah, that would even be beyond the 50% Fib level. So yeah, that would be good indication that a low is in but it also needs to hold a higher low afterwards but yeah that's sort of what i'm watching at the moment on the solana charts i'm not bearish but obviously uh and that's been sort of the message throughout the week actually we had no let's say confirmed low in place yet actually um but solana shows further weakness so i'm just watching for signals that we get a first five wave move up or so um I think the rebound will be quickly if there is one, but it's not that visible yet, but at least the market today has calmed down a bit. That's my update about Solana. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Also, make sure that you follow us on Instagram and Twitter for additional content. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.